Praise the Lord. Thank God for that singing today. I'm glad to know that when, when Jesus touches you, you'll know that you've been touched. Amen. I'm thankful for the day virtue left heaven and the Lord touched my life and made me a new creature. The black stain of sin that overshadowed my life, He took it away. And He gave me a new life in Christ. And I'm thankful for that. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. He's worthy of our praise today. Turn with me please to Hosea chapter 11. And if you would, let's all stand as we read the Scriptures together this morning. If you are here today and you have strayed from God, come back. Yes. Come back to Him today. He's waiting on you to come back. And He'll be glad for your return to Him. He'll wrap you in His loving embrace. As the Father saw that prodigal son while he was yet a great way off, and the Bible said he had compassion on him. And he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I pray this morning that if you're here today and you've strayed away from God, that you'll step out of that far country that you're in right now and step back to the Lord. Hosea chapter 11, verse number 1. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt as they called them. So they went from them, they sacrificed unto Balaam and burned incense to graven images. I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by their arms, but they knew not that I healed them. I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love, and I was to them as they that take off the yoke on their jaws. And I laid meat unto them. He shall not return into the land of Egypt, but the Assyrian shall be his king, because they refuse to return. And the sword shall abide on his cities, and shall consume his branches and devour them, because of their own counsels. And my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they called them to the Most High, none at all would exalt Him. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? How shall I sit thee as Zeboam? Mine heart is turned within me. This is God's unrivaled passion. Yes. My heart is turned within me. My repentings are kindled Together, I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. Thank you, Lord. Yes, amen. I will not return to destroy a prayer, for I am God and not man. Yes, thank you, Lord. The Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not enter into the city. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble. From the west, they shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt and as a dove out of the land of Assyria. And I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. And I'll read verse 12, but we won't focus much on verse 12 this morning because it's my estimation that verse 12 would better fit with the verses in chapter 12. But we'll read it. It says, Ephraim compasseth me about with lies in the house of Israel with deceit, but Judah yet ruleth with God and is faithful with the saints. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we look to you now, Lord, for the Spirit of God to minister to our hearts through this word. I pray, dear God, that you'd send the message this morning that's needed. Lord, to turn hearts to you and that Christ would have preeminence in everything that's said and done this morning. Lord, deal with that heart, God, that needs to come back to you today, I pray. Draw them, Lord, with these cords and these ties of love that we've read about this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, and let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of God today. Israel's really messed things up. 
They've committed spiritual adultery. They ran off with other lovers as Gomer did to Hosea. They've fallen into deep corruption over the span of generations. They've sought help from other heathen kings and heathen nations when they should have depended upon God. They worshiped false gods and in so doing reduced the one true God down to nothing more than one of these other false gods. Now they could never take away any of God's righteousness. They can never take away any of God's holiness. They can never take away any of God's divinity. Amen. They can never take away any of God's power with the things that they see, say and, and do and believe. But this was their perception of God. That God was just the same as every other false god that they worshipped. God is almighty. Yes, he, is. he doesn't change. Amen. That's still true in the day that we live in today. And we can't change that right. with the things that we say and the things that we do. For God to execute judgment against His people Israel is much more complicated than what it may initially seem like to us at first glance this morning. Because it would mean that God wasn't just punishing a sinful nation, but God would be casting off a people on whom He had settled His inheritance. This is much more complicated and complex than a lot of us will realize many times. When we look at chapter 11, we are seeing God's continued response to Israel that began way back in chapter 6 and verse number 4. And what we read in chapter 11 of God's response to Israel, I think we'll see this morning that it bears a striking resemblance to the Scripture that's found in Luke chapter 15 concerning the parable of the lost son. Or as many people call it, the parable of the prodigal son. I want to look at Hosea chapter 11 this morning with the parable of the prodigal son in mind. And let's lay these passages of Scripture side by side today and notice the similarities between the two. And I think you'll find that both passages of Scripture reveal a lot about the love of the Father. Yes. Let's look into this. In verses 1 and 2 of Hosea uh, chapter 11, we see a wayward son. We see a wayward son. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt as they called them. So they went from them. They sacrificed unto Balaam and burned incense to graven images. When Israel was a young nation, they were afflicted in the land of Egypt. They cried unto God and God heard their cries. The New Testament also... Somebody bring me a Kleenex, please. Patience, will you do that? I'm up here searching everywhere for a Kleenex. There's some right there. The New Testament also uses the image of Israel as a son in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 2 and verse number 15 when the Bible says, Out of Egypt have I called my son. So we can see in the Scripture that God was very gracious to Israel. He showed them kindness when they were young. He chose them because He loved them. And God set His affection on them. Amen. I'm glad to know this morning that God is a God of love and kindness. God is kind this morning, my dear friend. Don't ever let the devil convince you of anything other than this truth. And I'm very thankful that God is a God of love and kindness. The psalmist said in Psalm 31, verse 21, Blessed be the Lord, for He hath shown me His marvelous kindness in a strong city. And again, the writer said in Psalm 117, For His merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Hallelujah. So the Scriptures testify this morning that God is kind. Hallelujah. 
My personal testimony is this. God has been kind to me. Amen. When I get overwhelmed with the cares of this life, the kindness of God shines through and He lifts me up. Amen. When I get discouraged with the happenings of this world, I'm reminded of God's kindness toward me and it encourages me. Amen. God is kind. Don't let the devil convince you that He's not kind. God was kind to Israel. But they began to go astray. Just as the prodigal son had all that he ever needed at the father's house, but that didn't satisfy him. He too began to go astray. Let's go to Luke chapter 15 and read verses concerning the son who went astray. I'm going to Luke chapter 15 beginning in verse number 11. You'll notice the Bible says, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have fain, would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Do you see the similarities this morning between Israel and the prodigal son? God loved Israel when they acted foolish. God loved Israel when they were vulnerable. God loved them when they were helpless. Through it all, yes. God loved them. Amen. Amen. The prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, he had a good father. He had all that he ever needed at the father's house. But as he grew older, he began to feel this pull of the world. He began to feel this allurement of the world. And he gave in to that and he left the father's house to go out into that great big world. Amen out there. And the Bible said he squandered his inheritance. That's what he did. There's a lesson to be learned here in these comparisons in the Word of God. He would do all of us good this morning who have grown up in life to be able to reflect and remember the goodness and the kindness that God showed to us when we were young. Now you may be here this morning and maybe you didn't have a very good childhood. Maybe things were tough for you in the early days. Maybe you had some bad things happen to you. I still believe this morning that we can all think of some ways that God has been good to us. Just the very fact that we're here today, assembled in this place, is reason for great rejoicing. This morning, God delivered Israel from bondage, from slavery. Why? Because He loved it. In my own life, I could say that God has delivered me from bondage. He's delivered me from slavery. He has set me free. He's freed me from sin. He's freed, freed me from guilt. He's freed me from shame. I was a slave to sin, but thank God God liberated me. And He can do that for you too this morning. Then we see a caring father in verses 3 and 4 back in Hosea 11. I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by their arms. But they knew not that I healed them. I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love, and I was to them as they that take off the yoke on their jaws, and I laid meat unto them. These verses speak of a father's care toward an infant child. This is how God loved Israel. They were helpless without Him. But then they acted as if they didn't know the great love of God. They acted as if this was unknown to them. They owed everything unto the Lord. They owed their strength to the Lord. They owed their ability to the Lord. Everything. Amen. He's saying here in these Scriptures, I drove them with a harness of love. He led them with love. He didn't drive them fiercely with whips and chains. No. A considerate and a compassionate herdsman God is. He's not going to 
force the yoke upon their necks, but He's going to ease that yoke upon their necks so they'll be as comfortable as possible. This is how God cared for Israel. He drove them with uh, uh, cords of human kindness and ties of love. When something went wrong with Israel, God was their physician. He was there to take care of them. But He said they knew not that I healed them. He led them with love. But the amazing thing about it to me is that God is also the one who lifts the yoke off from their necks. This shows us a merciful God who's not willing to tire His people with constant toil and constant labor. But He was a caring father to Israel. The prodigal son's father in Luke chapter 15, he was a caring father. I'm going back to Luke chapter 15. I want to pick up reading of verse 17. It says, And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to, to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He thinks back to how good he had it at the father's house. He wanted for nothing. Times were good at the Father's house. When He had need, it was provided. The Father was a caring Father. It was all taken care of. It would serve us well this morning to be reminded that God is a caring Father. Amen. He cares for you and He cares for me. Amen. He supplies all of our need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. He's a caring Father today. Back in Hosea chapter 11, verses 5 through 7, it says, He shall not return into the land of Egypt, but the Assyrian shall be his king because they refuse to return. And the sword shall abide on his cities and shall consume his branches and devour them because of their own counsels. And my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they called them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. In spite of Israel's sin, God was not willing to reverse His great plan of redemption. In spite of it all, they won't be going back to Egyptian bondage. But as a result of the act, their action, they're going to follow the Assyrians, which actually happened in 722 B.C. That actually took place. Israel had determined to backslide. Israel was bent on backsliding. This was their resolution. They refused to repent. They refused to reform. They were bent on backsliding. The prodigal son resolved to demand his inheritance and leave the father's house. And as a result of his actions, he wound up in a far country, sitting in a hog pen, eating pig slop, and no man gave unto him. He was reaping what he sowed. But amazingly, in verses 8 and 9 of Hosea 11, we see the heart of God for Israel. And thank God I'm glad that it's described for you and I in terms that we can relate to. In terms that we can understand this morning. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adam? How shall I sit thee as Zeboah? Mine heart is turned within me. My repentings are kindled together. I will not execute the fierceness of mine anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee. And I will not enter into the city. We see the heart of God for Israel here in very human terms. God said, my heart is turned within me. His emotions are in turmoil. These are cries of anguish from God. Now, you may have a problem with hearing that God would cry out in anguish, but this is what Hebrew theologians tell us. This isn't coming from me. Men who are experts in this language will tell you that God is crying out in anguish in these verses. What He's saying is, how can I? How can I do this? How can I do this? But what settles the issue for God is God's unchangeable character. In order for God to be true to Himself, He, he has to deal with these people somehow. Amen. These verses foreshadow 
And that's the great thing about the Scripture. These verses also foreshadow the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who said in Matthew 15 and 24, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And again in Matthew 20 and 28, uh, where the Lord said, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God couldn't give Israel up. God couldn't give them up. The prodigal son's father wasn't going to give him up either. Luke chapter 15, again, verse 20. And he arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be married. Amen. He was still the father's son. He was still the father's son. Israel was still the people of God. Therefore, God thankfully determined not to carry out His fierce anger. I'm thankful this morning to know that God is Lord over His anger. Yeah. Yeah. He's Lord over His anger. Whereas many men today will tend to let their anger lord it over them. Right. But God is not so. Amen. He's Lord over all, including His own anger. I'm glad for that this morning. Amen. What made Israel worthy of receiving good at the hands of God? Nothing. Other than the fact that God qualified them to receive it. None of us are worthy of God's blessings. It all comes by His grace toward us. Verses 10 and 11. They shall tremble as a bird. Or excuse me. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. They shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt. And as a dove out of the land of Assyria, I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. God was calling them back to Him. And this call, these verses in the Bible speak of God roaring like a lion. Maybe you've heard that in a few contemporary Christian songs today. It comes right out of Hosea chapter 11. This call would make such an impression upon these people as that of a roaring lion would make upon the other beast of the forest. And then it says, the children shall tremble from the west. And I'm thankful for those words there in this verse because many believe that this is a reference to the future calling of the Gentiles at the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our holy trembling at the word of God will draw us to Him and not drive us away from Him. I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. All who come at God's call shall have a place with Him. They shall dwell with God. They'll be at home with God. As Jesus said in John chapter 14, He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in Me. Amen. In My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto Myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Those who come at God's call will be more at home with God than any man abiding in a fleshly or earthly home on this side of life. Amen. Thank you. And certainly more at home than anybody abiding in a far country or in a strange land. 
today. Israel had a place. It was with God. The prodigal son had a place. It wasn't supposed to be in that far country sitting in a hog pen eating pig slop. It was at the Father's house. Right. You have a place this morning. There may be somebody here today who stepped away from the Lord. You've sought to depend upon other things other than God. You've wandered away. And God is calling you back this morning through this Word today. Won't you come back to Him? Come out of that far country. Come out of the wilderness. Come out of the desert. Come out of that dry and empty land and come to Jesus this morning. Amen. Even after all of the horrible, wicked, idolatrous sins that Israel committed in the sight of God, God still loved them. And He desired good for them. The prodigal son's father still loved him after he wandered off, went into the far country and squandered his inheritance, wasted his substance with riotous living, doing things that he shouldn't have been doing, but he came back to the father and he found love and he found acceptance and he found mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Amen. It wasn't because he deserved it. You see, he didn't deserve any of that. It was all because of grace. And God will deal with you graciously this morning if you'll come to Him. Let's bow a word of prayer. Father in heaven, your message has gone out this morning. May the Spirit of